How's everybody doing? This is Uncle Chuck. I hope you're well. The bang at the bay door and the DHL guy's here. Well, at least he's already sped away. And I have got a new miner. And no, it's not an Ant Miner KA3. It is, I guess, inside the box down here. This is a brand new ASIC miner. What is it? We are gonna crack this and we'll find out exactly what's in here. And no, I was not waiting for somebody to send me this for review. I purchased this direct from China. So let's see what it is. All right, let's dig into it. Before we dig into this, I'd like to say, usually I wouldn't bother unboxing an ASIC miner because a lot of them just look very similar, especially this one as well. But this is a new model miner and I've never seen one of these in person before and most of you probably haven't either. So I thought we'd crack this thing and just take a look. All right, so let's dig in. So obviously I said before, it's an ASIC miner. What kind of miner is it? Or what does it mine? Well, let's, uh, oh, this is an interesting box. It looks like somebody's cut off uh, part of the inner lids here. Very similar foam, like most of the bit main. And, uh, We'll dispose of this box here. So, there we go. Now taking a look at this already from the pre-production pictures, it was, it was definitely looks different than that. They had an opening here. So, first you know, glance at this thing, it looks pretty, very similar to a Bitmain Amp Miner, but it's not. So this is definitely a clone machine. So the cat's out of the bag, what the heck is this? This is a brand new miner called the Blue Star L1. So this is a LTC miner, so Litecoin, and can also merge mine Doge. So obviously with the big pump of Doge the last three or four days here, and Litecoin as well. And in fact, I actually had this shipping prior to the actual pump. Very similar in, in all honesty. I could find very little information about these miners online, so I really took a big chance buying this thing, but it looked interesting, you know, to be honest, like 5,000 mega hash, 3,800 watts as far as power consumption, so a little bit hungry, but, um, you know, the distributor didn't even have a whole heck of a lot of information. So I definitely took a big chance on it. So I'm gonna pull out an L7 and we'll put them side by side and compare. So here we have a real Bitmain L7. This is the 9050 model. And you can see they do look similar, but when you put them side by side, there are definitely differences. And one of the first things that I noticed is the difference in the weight. Not that this one's a light miner, it's not, but the L7 is a substantial amount difference as far as weight. But when I mention right off the get-go about the power supply, if you take a look at the power supply, they're almost identical to a point where the stickers are in the same spot. Although this one reads slightly different, I would bet that in fact that these are exactly the same power supply. And then next to that, well, performance, I guess we're gonna have to take a look. As I said, the Blue Miner L1 is definitely hungrier at 3,800 watts and 5,000 mega hash, where here we've got just over power consumption, about 3,400 plus watts on the L7 9050, and obviously over 9,000 uh, mega hash, well, consistently uh, over 9,000 mega hash. So I think the next step is we try to plug this thing in, well not try, we do, and get it up and running. So there's, again, very little information, so I am just gonna have to do a little bit of trial and error. Okay, let's give her a go.
I'm going to set foot outside the mining room because it's loud as heck there. And I've got a couple things set up here on my jank testing bench. My other building's a little better as for a testing area. But for now, I've connected that L7 I had on the table and above it, the brand new Blue Star L1. For Cura, in case anybody wants to know, this is an old InnoSilicon A11 and it happens to be mining EW at the moment. Not really profitable, but I'm mining anyway. So I'm gonna assume most of you already know how to set one of these up. If you don't, quickly I'm gonna go through the things, just the basic things you need. So first and foremost, well, you're gonna need an ethernet cable to get some internet to your miner, and you're gonna need a couple cables to get power. These are C13 to C14, and you're gonna need a PDU, and we've got a brand new one here in the box. So I'm gonna head and go ahead and open this up and we'll see if we can get this thing powered up. Okay, I've got some things plugged in here. Obviously, I've got our cables into our miner. They're going down and into our PSU, which we'll plug in momentarily. I've got an ethernet cable going into the miner, which is going along and into our switch that we've just kind of temporarily set up here. And uh, let's head over and plug in our PSU and see if we can't get this thing powered up. All right, let's look for lights. Well, we've got lights. So that's a good start. Well, the next step, again, there's no real direction. So what I'm doing right now is really gonna be the official setup guide unless the company that manufactures this actually releases and posts something. So let's see how we can make out. So before we set up our new Blue Star L1 miner and get it up and mining, I thought we'd head over to ASIC Miner Value and look at the Bitmain Ant Miner L7. So, you know, we just unboxed the Blue Star. We've had it side by side with a real L7, and there's no doubt about it, this thing is a clone. That's not a bad thing if it works, because first and foremost, it's a lot less. But both miners mine LTC and Doge, and right now, obviously, Doge is pumping, LTC's doing well, and you got Bitmain that's cranking the prices up on the L7. So now you're looking at 9050. They were around 9,000 bucks or so. Now they've cranked them up to 12,000. Where you're looking at the Blue Star, they're about 3,600 bucks. So yeah, you're getting less hash rate, higher power consumption, but you're still getting, you know, again, decent profitability, we should think. So when I first started doing some digging online about the Blue Star L1, and again, as I said, there's very little information this black miner L1 kept coming up. So obviously a predecessor, different hash rate, different power consumption, and this hash altcoin. Now I'm just gonna touch on this, but these guys here used to manufacture FPGA miners over the last couple years or so, and they had a number of them. And it looks like they had an offshore hosting facility. And if you look at their Discord and their Telegram, man, there's a ton of unhappy guys on there, but it looks like they kind of pulled the rug out from underneath a bunch of guys that were hosting with them offshore, which is just utter bull. I mean, being a miner, it's already challenging enough. This, I truly believe, is an OEM deal. I'm in manufacturing and distribution, and I can go to a manufacturer and I can pay money to alter one of their products and rebrand it and release it under like a licensing agreement. I purchased so many units. So you take a look at this, you got the Black Miner L1. And then after that, you've got this D10. And now you've got the Blue Star L1. So this leads me to believe that these are all OEM deals where companies have gone to the manufacturer and chose to manufacture so many units and put their name on it. I'm gonna close it like that and let's see if we can't get this thing 
up and running. So let's dig into this. I'm gonna be honest with you, I've already gone ahead and logged into the dashboard of the miner and done some of the settings because you know what? There was a bit of a trial and error with this. There was no directions. And although it's very similar to most other Bitmain amp miners, again, I just didn't wanna bore you guys. So I'm gonna go through the steps and how I got this thing up in rocking. So the first thing that you wanna do is to use an IP scanner, you know the deal. But what I found interesting is when I scan my network, as you can see here, it actually says Ant Miner. I kind of had to laugh at that. Get your IP address, put it in your browser, press enter, and you're gonna come to this screen. Most of you that have, or anybody that has an Ant Miner, does this look familiar? It should, because it's exactly the same. So we're talking, are we talking clone or what here? Type root under the user and root under the password and click enter and you are in the dashboard of the miner. So you'll see a column on the left, similar to most of the other ASIC miners that are out there. You wanna scroll down to pool in miner, and this is where you see your stratum address, worker, very similar to most other miners. And at the bottom, the only difference is this power consumption mode, which we'll figure out in a bit. So anyway, you need to figure out what pool you're gonna use. And obviously with Doge pumping right now and LTC is, is doing great as well, you are going to want to choose a pool that pays out in Doge. So the irony, I did a video a few weeks ago before Doge started pumping on our L7s and I was talking about playing the Doge lottery. So F2 pool is an option for you because they pay out in Doge rewards and so does DX pool. You can mine LTC and get Doge rewards. But at this time, I'm using F2 pool and all honesty, since I did the last video, this is where I have all of our L7 miners. So simply head on over to home and scroll down the page and this is where you're going to see the stratum address. You wanna just copy and head back to your Blue Star L1 miner and put in your stratum address right into here and worker name, whatever you use to log into F2 pool, you wanna put that in here. As you can see, Uncle Charlie, and back in the Blue Star, Uncle Charlie. Simply put a period and behind it, if you've only got one, then don't worry. Just put BL or I put BL01 because you never know, I might, may end up with another one. I've gone ahead and put a backup pool here and a second stratum address. So I highly recommend that. Always make sure to put an X or whatever password you would like because sometimes the miner will not connect to the pool. So go ahead and do that. So once you've done that, then the next thing you wanna do is scroll down to the bottom and click save. Now we're not gonna worry about the settings here. This all has to do with the high hash rate or the low power mode. So right now we're just gonna go straight out of the box, maximum hash rate with the, obviously the higher power consumption as well. Click save. Now the miner is gonna go ahead and save the settings and it should reboot within two or three minutes. So just give it a moment. It may take a little longer than that, so be patient. But as you can see, we're up in mining. And as far as our hash rate, we're really close to that 5,000 mega hash. You know, the interface looks very similar to an ant miner, a little more old school looking, but the information is very similar. So the Blue Star L1 has three hash boards, very similar to the S19J Pro, the 110, the 104, the L7. So you've got chip temperature, PCB temperature, fan speed, all again, pretty much the same information. So next step is head over to whatever pool that you set the miner up on. I'm with F2 pool. Here you can see obviously our other L7s, but here is our Blue Star. So we are over 5,000 mega hash, which is great. And right in line where we're supposed to be, obviously not as high as some of our L7s, but we have different variants or different versions here. We've got 9050s here, we got 9300s, so that's why you see some of the hash rates higher on some of our L7s. So let's head back to our miner, head down to configuration, back to pool, and let's look at the low power mode. So. First and foremost, again, this is gonna be a bit of trial and error here. So I am going to click on power mode, take it out of custom voltage, and I am just guessing here, and I'm gonna click save. So after the miner reboots and we've clicked on this low power mode, which was just gambling, that you can see that the custom voltage had changed to 910, custom frequency of 340, 
and the EMA stayed the same. But I've been up, I've had the video off for about five minutes. So if we go to minor status, as you can see, we're just over 2000 mega hash, which is the literature, the only thing that I kind of had on this minor that low power mode is supposed to be about 3200 mega hash. So what I can assume if we go back to pool, minor, we scroll down here and we go back into custom voltage mode, we should be able to change this and play around with and, and to be able to affect our power consumption and as well our hash rate. So I might play around a little bit. I'll get back with you in a minute and see if we can come up with, well, get this machine somewhere around the 3200 mega hash. So what I ended up doing is I reached out to the supplier that I got the miner from. To be honest, I really didn't feel comfortable messing around with these voltage and frequency in case I messed the miner up and avoid a warranty or what have you. So I got these numbers from him, the voltage of 1200, the frequency of 475, and the EMA is the same. So I've been back up and mining about five minutes, but as you can see, I'm almost at 3000 mega hash but not quite that low power consumption or low power mode that the literature I had on this miner. But let's be honest, most of us want to maximize profits and we want to have the highest hash rate that we can get. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the pool settings down below to where the configuration was. And I'm going to look, I made some notes of what the voltage and the frequency was when I got the miner. And I'm gonna post this below. So just in case you change yours and you don't know, I will put the factory settings below. The miner's in the factory settings now, so higher hash rate and power consumption. But really, you know, I mean, that's what we're all looking for, maximum profitability, and the hash rate goes hand in hand with that. Our voltage is at 1260, frequency 825, and the EMA has stayed the same the whole time at 128. So if we head up to minor status now, we're really close to that 5,000 mega hash, which is the posted maximum hash rate for this minor, give or take 3%. But if it was me, in all honesty, I would just leave it the way it is out of the box. If you wanna change it, I will put in those those settings that I did make the changes to get the hash rate down and the power consumption down, obviously, but I would just leave it alone. Something else I wanted to bring up with you guys, if all you have is a 20 amp circuit at home, the Blue Star L1 is not gonna work for you. Because as you can see, we're over 20 amps and you are gonna pop your breaker. Now above here, this is our L7, our 9050 model, and we are under 17 amps. So you could easily run this on that 20 amp breaker. Now something else we're gonna look at here. What we're looking at here is the actual power usage of the Blue Star L1. And I tell you, in the green, we are over 4,000 watts. So much higher than the advertised 3,800. So this baby loves the juice. And next to it, we've got our L7, our 9050 model. So we're just over 3,400 watts. So this is definitely something you're also going to have to take into consideration if you plan on buying a Blue Star L1. So we've been mining for close to 12 hours, not long enough to check profitability, but I can say this much so far. The miner is close to that 5,000 mega hash, which is reported it's supposed to be around that. But again, I'm gonna have to come back and I'll report back on profitability over the next three or four days and post a video on that. So is this a great deal? Well, I guess it's depending on who you are and whether or not you have the ability to fit this into your power grid because this thing is power hungry. And compared to the Atminer L7, the 9050 model, this thing is over 4,000 watts and over 20 amps. So you're gonna need a 30 amp breaker minimum and you're gonna have to have some juice at your house or building or wherever you're putting this thing. But overall, I mean, you can purchase three of these based on the price of one Ant Miner L7 9050. Bitmain's holding us hostage right now and spot price is close to that 12 grand mark where these Blue Star L1s are close to that $3,600 mark. Again, it's gonna depend on who you are. If we have problems, are we gonna be able to get these things fixed? This is the unknown. But for the moment, I'm gonna give it the Uncle Chuck one skull hand up. So 
Smash that subscribe button, hit the like, and we're gonna see you guys all soon, and I'll check back with you on the profitability in the next video. Peace out.